And of course, we're going to be talking about Elliot Easton and the cars formed in Boston, Massachusetts in 1976 and helped spearhead new wave music in the late 70s and early 80s. But when I hear the cars, I don't really think of new wave. You know, I kind of reserve that title for bands like Flock of Seagulls and some of those groups, Aha, you know, where there's a lot of keyboard. And there is keyboard in the cars music, of course. You can hear synth and keyboard. But to me, the cars just sound like rock. You know, I don't label them new wave. They're a rock band, you know, and I think a big part of that is Elliot Easton's, you know, guitar playing and his style. And you'll hear power chords and single note riffs and all this stuff, but you'll also catch a lot of early rock and blues. I hear some rockabilly and some surf guitar ideas, you know, in his style, which is so fresh and different, where you had the new wave push with these synths and you know, digital sounds, but then you had these really old classic, you know, guitar fills and licks and double stop ideas, open string ideas and all kinds of stuff. Elliot's definitely a player you really have to watch because he sprinkles all these really cool things into his playing and you don't even really catch it. It just kind of flies by. And then when you go back and analyze it, it's like, oh, wow, that's really cool. You know, he's a craftsman with the guitar. I know for a lot of people, myself included, uh, the first Cars album from 1978, you know, the Cars, that's up there on the wall, that's one of their best albums, if not, you know, arguably their best album. And they had, you know, many studio releases, but there were so many songs. There's nine songs on that album. Three of them charted, you know, like on the Billboard charts, and three of them became just regular radio staples. So six of those nine songs are huge hits and everybody knows you know my best friend's girl and all these different songs and it's just really you know interesting to notice a band that came out swinging you know just like boston van halen you know guns and roses there's a bunch of bands like that where their first album is just on fire you know and you can't help but listen to it The opening that was Bye Bye Love from the Cars album, and I'm also using the uh, TC Electronic Ditto Looper just to recreate uh, the two guitar parts. And it starts, you know, with a single note uh, kind of riff and B. You know, and as soon as it does that kind of galloping, you know, single note riff, then it starts moving through this series of chords. And we're going to have E major, D over E, and then A over E, and it moves back to E right there. So you're kind of pounding this out. And you can find those chords in other places too. But I just kind of put it right in one spot like that. And I believe that is guitar one right there. And then you'll hear this descending kind of arpeggiated part like this. just a little piece of E, a little piece of D, and a little piece of A with that E root note. And then just end on that E power chord. Now right there during that part, two guitars and they split off and Rico Kasich, a uh, late great, you know, vocalist and songwriter, also played rhythm guitar. So I'm not sure who played which part, but uh, there is this part. And with the looper, I'm going to add guitar two, which is actually this. And at the very end, you kind of hear those last two notes, um, you know, the other guitar is already finished, but then those last two notes kind of chime in. 
something like this. <laughs> guitar parts fit together like pieces of a puzzle. It reminds me of Beatles or somebody like that where you have, you know, guitar one and then guitar two just meshes with that perfectly. You know, really crafty and that's the kind of stuff you find in the car's music a lot where these kind of guitar parts and fills and you know, chord progressions, they really do kind of interlock like pieces of a puzzle. But taking a look at that second part, there's a little piece of E major right there. There's D major, like this. And then A over C sharp. And then there's a really crafty way of picking through E major. You know, pick the B note there on the A string, then the low E open, then the D, and then the G. Part that kind of overlaps, you know, when the other guitar finishes, you hear those last few notes. Right up next is My Best Friend's Girl, also from the Cars album, and this is very simple, but there's something really sneaky and crafty happening, once again. And like I said earlier, you really have to watch Elliot Easton, because he does things like this all the time. But on the album, it sounds basically, uh, it sounds like this. It sounds like F, B flat, and a little piece of C. So the album version sounds like this. But I have a sneaky suspicion that it's actually played in E, A, and a little piece of B right there. And um, I think it's actually played like this. you know which which is the right way this is the pitch of the song but I believe it's actually played you know an open position like that and you might be wondering well, why you know what's going on here but I think it actually you know was recorded maybe it was a little bit too slow and then back you know in the late 70s uh, the reel to reel machine had a speed uh, knob or control and I believe maybe they recorded it it was maybe you know declared a little bit too slow so they change the pitch ever so slightly to speed up, you know, the tempo. But that's also going to raise the pitch from E to F. Because with that little pitch wheel, you don't really have to move it too far before it actually raises, you know, a half step like that. That's not really that far. <laughs> There's something interesting happening with the chords right there too. You know, the first two are just power chords. You know, if we're thinking of this F to B flat to C, he's not doing this. He's doing this. So right there, there's a little bit of contrary motion where we have B flat. And then when it moves to that little piece of C major, you know, one note's going up one note's going down. Really crafty, you know, that one little twist um, really makes that part stand out. It sounds cooler like that than it would if you just went to a C power chord. Eventually kind of hits the octave right there. Car's music uh, just you know featured power chords and basic you know major and minor chords like I talked about earlier, and some of their biggest hits you know just what I needed is primarily you know power chords and other songs too. Think of uh, you're all I've got tonight, and there's some you know simple things happening, but it's very effective and driving. You know it really pushes that song. <laughs> moving from E to B, kind of quick change, and then move chromatically, you know, A, A sharp back to B. You know, very simple, but a very powerful riff. It just grabs you, you know, as soon as you hear that. You 
know, for another one, um, think of uh, moving in stereo, and you've got. <laughs> Again, there's an interesting twist with that progression because it's moving from E to D up to F sharp. And then that last chord when it moves to C, you know, the reason why it sounds so unsettling, um, it's blurring what was established with that first, you know, pass of chords because you have E to D to that F sharp. And in that F sharp chord, there's a C sharp right there. But when they finally end up on that C chord, you know, that C5, it clashes with what you heard earlier with that F sharp. Because that, uh, that C note, you know, is a half step lower than that. So it has this very sinister, almost sounds like Sabbath or something, but it's a car song. examples from the song Shake It Up from the album with the same name and once again there's two guitar parts here so I'm gonna loop uh, with a TC electronic did a looper and it's something like this <laughs> there you can see in the beginning there's just three power chords C A to B flat and you can definitely hear a lot of eighth note rhythms in the cars music that very steady and driving you know pulse and it's catchy you know it gives dancers on a dance floor something to kind of work off of because they have that consistent constant flow and uh, there's tons of songs, you know, with straight eighth rhythms, blues and country and pop and rock and all sorts of stuff. So there's that driving, you know, eighth note rhythm there. And then on top of that, um, we're basically playing a little piece of C. A little piece of A minor. And then this is basically F7. And then that's released back to B flat, that little partial B flat. I guess it's like a B flat over F. example of this dual, you know, kind of puzzle piece guitar part idea. Um, check out the song you might think from uh, Heartbeat City, and we've got, you know, kind of a similar thing happening, something like this. <laughs> using the looper just to kind of capture that first part and of course I turned it off for the last half but it starts with a D power chord and then G to A back to D <laughs> this kind of complimentary you know second part where they're doing basically this and there's you know a D5 and you're adding that E note right there so it's kind of leading to like a partial A for a second and then back to D and then there's basically you know two notes of that G power chord like a G5 over D and right there you're gonna add that E note again and then move that up a whole step. So there's a partial A, and you're going to add this F sharp. And then after that... Then just go to a B. And right there, you're basically opening up that A string. I guess you could think of that as an A6. Uh, you can think of that a couple different ways. Go back to that partial D, add that E. And then there's an A over C sharp to D. 
like that. It's a little tricky. And just bounce on that D power chord. Something like that. Oh, uh, like this. examples from the song Good Times Roll, which is also from the Cars album, and I've seen uh, people play this incorrectly, like cover bands and like at music stores, you know, um, and I've seen a lot of like tabs online and stuff too where it's not quite right, and it's an unusual guitar part for sure. Um, so it's something like this. <laughs> something like that and if you're really paying attention and you really listen especially like the very beginning of the song when it's just the guitar you can hear he's actually fretting you know that B note on the low E string and then he's playing it as a harmonic before he runs over and grabs that double stop on the top so that's weird you know play with that uh, fretted note and then also that harmonic that's sitting right there and I think the secret to it is you want to start with an upstroke because it's actually there's a pickup note right at the very beginning which is that B note and then the first thing that you hear that's on the downbeat is the harmonic so I would recommend start that riff with an upstroke which is gonna feel a little weird for some of you but uh, start it with an upstroke and then you'll find it fits you know like in time or whatever <laughs> really just this kind of overtone kind of ringy noise kind of sound but it's in there especially like I said in the very beginning of the song you can really hear it and then once the drums and bass and keyboards and everything come in it's buried a little bit you can still hear it but you really have to listen for it you know once the song starts but in the very beginning you'll hear that <laughs> Eventually they move from that B down to A and do the exact same thing because there's a harmonic waiting, you know, right there on the fifth fret. So one, you know, strategy I would use as far as fretting that, you're actually going to probably want to fret a little bit further uh, up, you know, the fret than you normally would. You know, most players like putting their finger right in the middle of the two fret wires, which is kind of the optimum, you know, uh, fret hand placement. But for this, you know, that harmonic's really going to ring over the fret wire. You know, a little bit stronger than it would if you're back in the fret like that. Right? There's kind of this muffly overtone there. So you want that sound, but you also want to be able to fret that note. So I'm kind of just riding right on the fret when I fret right there. That way after I fret that note, it's a little buzzy, but then that harmonic's waiting right there. Same thing with the A. You know, it's a little weird. kind of you know um, it's kind of prodding rhythm or whatever it's kind of slow so it's like really slow funk or something you know when you're kind of mashing that out so that's a tricky guitar part and I can see where guitarists you know were a little confused but uh, check out those harmonics that are pinging because you can hear it if you're really paying attention that's gonna wrap this episode of chord play with the chords of the cars and definitely I'm a big fan you know and I I kind of stand up for them. You know, anytime I hear somebody mention, you know, the cars and they say the word new wave or the words new wave, 
It's like, no, 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 you know, they're a rock band. They just happen to have some keyboards, you know, in the mix too. And it was just at that time, you know, when there were a lot of new wave groups that were, you know, just exploding and it was all timing, late seventies, early eighties. Of course they continued, you know, beyond that. But uh, I think it was just, you know, they had a keyboardist and they had synth sounds and their music mixed with everything else. So they had that label, new wave. But it's like, no, they're a rock band. You can hear it, you know, I mean, power chords, steady eighths, you know, guitar solos, with these classic, you know, kind of 50s and 60s, you know, guitar licks and fills and stuff. You know, really, really cool stuff. So anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to the Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.